Hi guys, Jagosorf here. As uh, most of us model makers, I have a box full of trash and I always look at the stuff trying to figure out how to best reuse it. And this episode is all about reusing and recycling these materials. <coughs> It was one of the seldom times when I decided to plan things out, at least a bit. Although, as usually, I am only loosely sticking to the plan. So what I thought of was a piece of terrain that can be used in many different ways and which will allow me to use as much of my trash. It's my character! I'm the trash man! I come out, I throw trash all over the, all over the ring! I plan a two-story structure with an astrolabe of sorts on top, an observatory or something. It's going to be decorated with various bits and bobs, including some pipes, ladders and random gears. I'm hoping to balance this steampunk look with some glowing runes to make it look more arcane or dwarven. So let's start right away. As I said, I intend it to be a trash challenge of sorts. So let's start with an object that inspired it all. The humble tape roll. Or what's left of it. Um, it is going to make the main focal point of this build. The trick is to cut it into three bands of similar width. I start with measuring things out as if I knew how to count, um, but we all know what is really needed in a moment like that. My old trusty knife. Now in his very own big chest. So the trick to cutting a band of regular width without measuring too much is to put your knife on the side and simply start cutting like that. If your knife is not of the width that you need for your band, simply put it on top on something to make it taller, to like a book or a small piece of wood. These bands are supposed to be made out of metal, uh, brass or something like that. So I clean up the edges with a knife and bevel them slightly to make some interesting textures for the later dry brush. This, however, still leaves this cheap paper with some fringes, but there's an easy method to get rid of them. Burn them with fire! Now it's a matter of arranging them in an interesting way. I find that it is important that at least one of these bands doesn't sit at the 90 degree angle to the other ones. In a way it looks less staged, more dynamic, as stupid as it sounds. Glue them together with PVA glue, it's paper so it should bond very well and quite quickly without the need of any clamps. And that's how it looks uh, dry, um, now we need a building to put uh, the piece on top of it. And for that we shall use my favorite recycled material and namely corrugated cardboard. Sourced from your local Lidl, where it lies everywhere, just free, ready to be taken home, adopted into the right hands. To make things easier and quicker for myself, I forgo measuring again and simply cut a corner piece of a size that seems to fit the overall scale. I then use it to kind of measure out how big the second parts need to be. And I want this thing to have two levels, so I cut some of the cardboard on the other part in half. I then glue both parts together with my hot glue gun. And by the way, this was the first tool and amongst the first things that I ever bought for myself after moving out, out of my parents' place. It really needs replacing, but all oh, the memories. I then used some offcuts from the cardboard to build up the first floor and angle one of these offcuts to make a simple little access ramp. This ramp is going to serve me as a quick and easy base uh, for the steps that I'm going to sculpt later. 
in the rough plan for this build you've seen that I want to have a sort of a stone ledge or a cornice going around the whole building, giving it some more separation, um, breaking up the monotony of it. In preparation for this later step, I mark these ledges out with some strips of cardboard. It also has the added bonus of making the whole structure somewhat stronger. At this point I also decided that I want to flip the design of my project a bit. Um, the walls themselves are going to be plain stone and the ledges are going to have these magic symbols on them. I achieved a stone look by plastering the cardboard with speckle. But really anything that spreads nice and has good texture could work just as well. You could use actual plaster for this or grout or texture paste or simply cover the walls in glue and fine sand or powder. Anything just to hide the cardboard and make the build more nice and sophisticated to the eye. I find it important to be able to adapt and recognize that something looks good on paper or in your head, but it may not look as good in real life. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Just don't drink your own pee, pee or eat some weird box. that's just plain icky. I put the structure aside for a moment uh, to let it dry and turn my attention to the various uh, elements that will decorate it. And again I turn to my trash box of interesting stuffs. First I want to make a sort of plinth for the astrolabe to sit on. I found this part from a nose spray bottle and a cap from some resin mixing thing, I think. I then, using a drill and a knife, make a small hole in the bottom of the astrolabe for the nose spray thing to sit in and glue it with super glue and soda, making a firm strong bond. Then it gets attached to the bottom part in the same way. No steampunk-ish build is ready without random gears and don't do nothing. <laughs> so I found these plastic gears that I butchered from a kitchen timer that stopped working after being repeatedly knocked down on the floor. And I glue them in places that make just a little bit of sense if you squint hard enough. I again glue them with the same method, which has an added bonus of imitating rust very good, which fits very well with this kind of abandoned, forgotten building look that I'm going for in most of my builds and this one is no exception. The machinery starts to look nice, but it still isn't as nice as I want it to be. And if things don't look alright, just keep adding little details. Um, I personally opted for some studs. A perfect option to make these studs are these paper cotton swabs. You just need to cut them into roughly similar discs and glue them on. I fail massively on the roughly similar part, but hey, in model making terms there is no such thing as failure or mistake. We have character and uniqueness and handmade. So don't stress too much about things being perfect, just keep the train rolling. Going by this philosophy I add some additional strips of cardboard to imply some more interesting structures and um, apply more of the soda glue mix for additional rust and additional texture. The centerpiece of this build is ready in no time and can be hot glued on top of the building. In the meantime the speckle should have dried and it should be able to proceed on the walls. To keep up with the trash and recycling theme I wanted to use the livery food packaging, which is a similar material to XPS foam and with some practice can be sculpted and textured quite well. But I didn't have pieces that were large enough for this build, so I decided to change my tactic and try something new out. 
In the bargain bin of my craft store I found this air drying clay and bought it on a whim, so why not try some sculpting? Although I double in sculpting every now and then, um, it's an unfamiliar material for me. And um, although it's a fairly simple thing to make, um, it's good to take some time thinking it through. I first rolled out some strips of the clay and attached them to the previously marked out ledges. With the help of some PVA glue, as they didn't want to hold on their own. After that, um, they needed some texture, so I used the safe old method of using a rolled up aluminum foil ball. You could also use a cool rock or anything that you think will leave some nice stony patterns. Then I marked out the separate stones with a spatula and give them some form with a silicone sculpting tool. If you don't own such a tool, don't worry, an old felt pen or a bamboo skewer will do just as well. If you want to get fancy, you can even make a tool like this with green stuff or similar sculpting putty. For the magic symbols, I simply use a somewhat smaller tool and press in some viking runes. Just keep your tool perpendicular and press the signs in. Something like a cut popsicle stick would also work perfectly fine here. Um, I should have added a hidden message of some sort in these uh, runes, um, but this idea dawned on me after it was all sculpted, so sadly there is no message. Or is there? Nah, there is no message. I repeat the process for all three ledges. The middle ledge also doubles as a small handrail on the gallery. I didn't do a handrail um, for the top level as I thought it would interfere with the game too much. With all that done, I quickly made the stair by first forming some cylinders and then giving them a triangular cross section and attaching them one by one to the ramp. I could make them more miniature friendly, but this usually makes the stair look very unnatural. I think I struck a good balance in this case. It is possible to put a miniature on there, but not all of them. I quickly smooth out and fill in any parts that look bad with the spatula and the sculpting tool and then I sculpt the stones of the stairs in. I leave them with very little texture as frequently used steps tend to smooth out through the years. Now it's time to complete the build with more steampunk tat. I make a ladder with some old sprues connected by matchsticks. Add some pipes here and there. Random cables. And other random levers or something. Then it's just a matter of correcting some mistakes, hiding some blunders, um, as well as covering the roof in a thick layer of sand. Which, by the way, brings us to the end of the building part. Most of the painting isn't anything out of the ordinary. I start with a black prime spray, which was supposed to be matte, but it Obvious. isn't. I overbrush all the stone with anthracite grey, then I dry brush it with a very light grey. And for the last layer I mix in some white and brush from top to bottom to give it some basic highlights. While watching one of my hobby role models for inspiration, I cover the dirt roof in brown paint and while it's still wet I try to blend in a lighter and lighter yellow. At the first glance it didn't come out super cool, but a simple tan dry brush ties it all together very nicely. 
the metal parts get covered in the same brown paint as the dirt, as I find painting metallics on black very unsatisfying. Brown undercoat supplements copper and brass very well and gives the steel a hint of rust. I then apply a heavy dry brush of copper and steel metallic on the different parts in a way to make them look interesting and break up the monotony. Speaking of monotony, I really wanted to give some more color in this part of the build, so I painted this band blue. Right now the blue looks very lonesome, but no worries, it will get some blue friends. Then the most fun part of painting metal, making it look old. I apply the rust effect paint from Army Painter liberally, especially everywhere where elements touch and in places where water would run down. The copper slash brass parts I cover in a teal wash, trying to put it mostly in the recesses and take away all the excess. But after it dried out, it took away the metal sheen from the copper, so I did a quick second dry brush on top. And now comes the next major step in this build, the wash. And it's major rarer than usual, because inspired by my terrain building gurus, I bought some oil paints and mixed up some oil washes. And I tell you guys, it is really magical. It's really pure magic. It takes a week to dry, but it flows perfectly and it's so straightforward and consistent to make yourself. I can't recommend it enough. But the observatory still looked very drab and monotone, so to break it up and give it more color, I decided to make the runes glow. It's a very easy, if somewhat time-consuming process. First I fill in all the runes with a basic blue. Then I do a generous dry brush with the same blue, trying to go away from the runes. You know, to follow how the light would fall on the stones from the inside of the rune. Then it's just a matter of lighter and lighter dry brushes, with each layer getting closer to the center of the rune. And as a final step for the glow effect, I put a dash of light blue into the center of each rune. Et voilà! Here we have it! That's how it looks like in person and yeah, it was... I think that this build is a big step for me. It may be a small step for the wargaming community, but it's a big step for me. And namely, these oil washes really opened my eyes um, for what's possible. I didn't quite show it enough in the um, video, um, but I also used some brown wash in some places and it looks just so perfect as dirt and, and the only bad thing is how long it dries, but yeah, I really, really, really like it. If you make one of these yourself, please inform me, send me photos in, on Instagram or on all my social medias are down below. And um, yeah, I hope um, you click subscribe um, to be informed of more such wonderful builds and tutorials in the future. And uh, I see you next time. Bye!